We previously discussed some of the patient results, patients with multiple sclerosis who have been treated with adult stem cells, specifically fat stem cells. Here's a publication that just came out examining fat-derived mesenchymal stem cells, a type of fat stem cell, in treatment of the mouse model of multiple sclerosis. In order to give to the mouse a disease that resembles multiple sclerosis, mice are injected, they're immunized, with a peptide, uh, which is a piece of the protein found in myelin. The specific one used in this study is called MOG, MOG 33-35. Now, what the investigators did is they immunized the mice, and then the mice develop the symptoms of multiple sclerosis, and the mouse Initially, the tail stops moving, and then the hind leg, hind limbs, the back paws, and then the front paws to stop moving, and then if it's very severe, the mouse becomes completely paralyzed. This intensity scale is graded from 1, which is only the leg not moving, I mean the tail not moving, to 5, which is complete death of the animal. So, what the investigators did is they injected fat-derived stem cells, after they gave the autoantigen, after they induced the disease. And as you can see in this figure, um, on the up and down axis, on the y-axis, the higher you are up on the y-axis, the more severe the disease is. The numbers we talked about uh, with the scale of 1 to 5, that's the numbers on the y-axis. So as you can see, the animals that received the fat-derived stem cells had less disease as compared to the controls. Now what happens if you wait longer? If you give the stem cells once the disease has set in and the mice have already uh, undergone damage of the nervous system. As you can see in this figure, when you give the stem cells later after the disease is higher, again you see a reduction in disease. So this tells us that the stem cells, the fat-derived stem cells in a reproducible animal model can inhibit the disease that resembles multiple sclerosis. This is a very important point because people argue sometimes, they say, well, in your clinical case reports or case series, the patients that you treat, maybe there's placebo effect because we have not published a randomized trial to date. But in animals, in inbred animals, there is a very high degree of reproducibility and placebo effect is obviously much smaller in the animal as opposed to the person. Now, how do the stem cells work at inhibiting this disease? One method, which other people have talked about and we've talked about here on this uh, YouTube channel, is that they inhibit the immune response against the myelin. So, in this figure, um, what the investigators did is they extracted immune cells from mice that received the fat stem cells or mice that did not. And you can see that where well, there was pointing that the animals that received the fat stem cells, the T cells from those animals proliferated less, they multiplied less in response to the myelin derived protein, implying that there is immune modulation going on. The second a very important point is that the investigators used genetically labeled mesenchymal stem cells. These mesenchymal stem cells glow green. And what they did is after they gave the disease to the animals and after they injected the stem cells, then they uh, allowed the stem cells to home and uh, to home into the central nervous system and then they made serial sections of the brains and of the nervous system tissue. And when they quantified the number of cells that are green, implying they came from the stem cells, compared with markers from uh, brain tissue, they found that some of the cells became glial cells, as seen in this figure because they expressed the protein GFAP. Some of them became oligodendrocytes. These are cells that make myelin. Uh, but not too many of them. And as you can see, a lot of them became oligodendrocyte precursors. These are cells that give rise to the cells that make myelin. And these are the cells on the far right that express PDGF receptor.
this is a milk for the for the uh, play for the oligodental sites, precursor cells. Now, one last point which is very interesting is where do the cells actually go? I mean, we saw this data saying that the cells become oligodendrocyte precursors, but what the scientists did to actually examine in vivo where they go, they used the labeled cells they put, they, uh, that express luciferase, and they injected the cells in the mice, and as you can see, when you inject them into healthy mice, the cells primarily go into the liver, and some in the lung. When you inject them into the mice having the, the multiple sclerosis the disease, you can see a lot of the cells go into the spinal cord area and into areas of the central nervous system. Now, when you give the antibody to alpha-4 integrin, alpha-4 integrin is a molecule that stem cells use to go where they're needed. When you block that molecule by giving an antibody, then the stem cells do not go in the spinal cord and in the central nervous system. So this is a very important study because it's saying, number one, fat stem cells do have the ability to inhibit disease in the animal model of multiple sclerosis. Number two, the fat stem cells actually go and become the progenitor cells, the father cells, of the cells that make myelin. And number three, the study is very important because it's showing that the stem cells actually go into the central nervous system through these interesting molecules called alpha-4 integrins. Thank you very much.